Hi everyone, today we are looking at multiple alleles and we want to um, understand what happens if a gene has more than two alleles, um, how we would write that and what happens in terms of them being inherited. So we're going to start off with an example and we're going to use blood group as our example. So first of all here we have two chromosomes um, and we can see the position of the gene on these two chromosomes. So this is our gene locus here. Um, and with blood group, there are three different alleles that you could have on these chromosomes. We could have allele A, allele B, and allele O. Now the problem is we can't write it like this. Because if you remember, the letter tells us um, that we have uh, what the gene is. So if we wrote it like this, we would be saying that these are three different genes. And they're not. They're all versions of the same gene. They're alleles. So we can't write it like this. So instead of that, what we do is we write it like this. We would write, we have a letter here which represents the gene, and for blood group the letter that has been chosen is I. It's fairly arbitrary. And then the A comes up here as a superscript. And then allele B would be written like this, and allele O would be written like this. So by doing this, we're saying that they all have the I, which means they're all the same gene, the gene for blood group, but we have three different alleles. So if we're looking at um, where the alleles are, this chromosome can have one allele. So let's say it has allele A, and this chromosome can have another allele. So for this individual, it has two versions of allele A. Or maybe it, this individual has one allele A and one allele B. The other option, it could have one allele A and one allele O. So we'll look in a minute of all, at all the possible combinations, but you can see that even though there are three alleles, there are only two chromosome positions where that allele could be found. So an individual can only have two alleles even if there are more than two alleles in the whole population. Okay, so let's look in at uh, blood group then in a bit more detail. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at the genotype and then the phenotype. And there's a reminder here, um, there's a reminder here, sorry, of our uh, alleles. So first of all, we could have the genotype IAIA, and no surprise that the phenotype is A, so this means blood group A. Okay, blood group A. The next possibility, we could have IA and IB. Now, this is a little bit different. The thing to help you here is that these are both capital letters. So because they're both capital letters, that tells you that these alleles are codominant. That means that the phenotype, it can't be the phenotype for allele A, and it can't be the phenotype for allele B, because we've got a situation where we have codominant alleles, and this is a heterozygote. So the phenotype is a combination, and we happen to just call that AB. We haven't given it some other funny name, we just say it's a combination, it's AB. We could also have AO. Now this is a bit tricky to see sometimes, but if I tell you that this O is a small O and we've got a capital A. So what that tells you is that the capital A tells us that it's dominant and the small O tells us it's recessive. So in this example of our multiple alleles, not only have we got three different alleles, Allele A and B are codominant to each other, but allele O is recessive. That means that the phenotype here would be A. What about if we had this phenotype? Sorry, this genotype. We'd have the phenotype B. And if you had this phenotype, again, we've got a capital B and a small O. So B is dominant over O, so you'd have the phenotype of the blood group would be B. The only time you would get blood group O 
as if you had a homozygous individual with two O alleles. And that's it. That's all you need to know about multiple alleles.